Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as the Revit Kid. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight we have a, a special uh, episode, a crossover with, with the Shinemo group. For those of you who have watched the last 40 episodes here of BIM After Dark Live, we did this once before with Paul Albin. I'm going to keep the intro short today because I want to get everyone else on screen. Uh, in the background you don't see, but there's a bunch of things going on with Microsoft Teams. <laughs> so I want to bring them in as soon as possible. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be talking about Dynamaps today, which is super cool. Um, before we jump in, I do want to thank BIMBOX for sponsoring this episode. For those of you who are not familiar with what BIMBOX is, uh, it's a computer manufacturer, um, but the difference uh, between them and most of the manufacturers you've dealt with is that they have designed and built a laptop and desktop specifically optimized for Revit. Uh, you see I got one sitting behind me right here. That's called the Striker 2. Um, they deliver in 10 to 14 days, which is pretty neat. Um, the other thing uh, recently that's going on is uh, anyone who's familiar with with technology and, and what's going on in the world. You may know that Bitcoin is skyrocketing to something like $40,000 for one Bitcoin. Um, and usually when that happens, video cards are extremely difficult to find. And uh, anyone who has read the news knows that the new 3000 uh, series graphics cards from Nvidia sold out uh, within less than seconds uh, on most uh, locations. Uh, Bimbox uh, informed me that they have over 300 of them in stock. So if you're looking to build a new machine and you want it to have a 3000 uh, RTX 3000, uh, reach out to Buck and his team. So if you're interested, uh, head on over to bimbox.bimafterdark.com or email sales at bimboxusa.com. Make sure you let them know that Jeff sent you and that you saw it here um, and they'll hook you up. So without further ado, I want to introduce my guests because uh, they're waiting patiently in the background. And so uh, uh, you're actually not going to see me very well. I'm in the corner here, but I want to welcome Paul and Mustafa. How's it going, guys? Great. <laughs> great thanks uh and uh i want to remind everyone on the youtube so we've got we've got a, a teams meeting going on and youtube streaming going on so this will be kind of interesting um but uh i want to remind everyone that this is live right now and so uh feel free to oh on the yeah make sure you mute yourself on the teams meeting please guys because that's, that's gonna go nuts between all these audios going on um but feel free to ask questions as we're going along um i think paul how do you want to handle it on the team side just uh in the chat maybe ask questions if, if something pops up yeah, for now, let's do everything. Uh, everybody could stay muted. Looks like everybody's done that. Um, appreciate it. And uh, we've got a nice turnout on the team side. Uh, do send any questions you have through chat. I'll be monitoring that. And if it seems important enough to interrupt Mustafa, I will uh, I will do that. Otherwise, we'll save them to the end. <laughs> and um, he's going to largely talk to us about Dynamaps. But uh, Mustafa, feel free. This is your show. If you want to show some <laughs> other stuff, cool stuff you're working on, we'd love to see it. So, for sure. Uh, uh, any anything that uh, touches Dynamo, our group is interested in. So we're we're uh, we're excited about that. Definitely, so, definitely. Um, and, I, and I don't think I don't think we need to have Paul Alban do an introduction, right, Paul? I don't think so. <laughs> Unless you want it, do you want to do no, an introduction? Uh, no, I'm good. I don't need an introduction. I think we're going to just turn it right over to Mustafa and uh, let him uh, jump in and show us uh, some Dynamaps. And I Let's know this it. is uh, one that I'm re real excited to see. So uh, off we go. All right. Thank you guys very much. Thank you very much for the invite uh, in the first place. I'm really, really cool to be part of this. And um, let's get going. So can I just share my screen? Yeah, go for it, man. All right. So, so as I usually like to do things, it's just going to start with a couple of slides to uh, set up the big picture, and then I'll move on to a live demo. And so yeah, as, uh, as it was uh, mentioned already, this is mostly going to be about Dynamaps which isn't exactly a uh, new tool, um, but it still is something that people discover on a regular basis and I get contacted about it a lot. Um, it's a cool tool that lets you get your um, site uh, context uh, right inside Dynamo and it also has some tools to help you push it into Revit uh, in a very, well, I would say it's a seamless way unless you're looking at a portion of, of uh, the planet that doesn't have good data. So that's mm -hmm. mostly where um, it might get complicated, but otherwise it should work great. So I think one thing that's very interesting about Dynamaps is uh, how it puts together a lot of uh, data sources. That's also what I love about Dynamo. Dynamo is a place to make uh, different uh, uh, data sources meet and, and different processes meet and uh, you know, use all of that to cook up something that's that's really cool and useful. And this is what's going on here. So really what Dynamaps is about is bringing all of these things together. So we have, uh, on one hand, we have OpenStreetMaps, 
uh, OpenStreetMaps is going to be the building data and the tree data and the roads data. Uh, so all of that is available for free. It's uh, an open source uh, uh, thing. And everyone can uh, go to OpenStreetMaps, create an account, and start inputting data about their neighborhood or a uh, you know site that they've been working on and that they felt there wasn't any, I mean, they realized there wasn't any data about it uh, up there and decided to um, to make that database even richer. So it's uh, it's usually very precise. And the reason why I chose it is, well, it, first of all, it's free. So for a free tool, it felt like a good choice because Dynamaps, Dynamaps is free as well. And uh, the other thing is that it covers almost a whole planet. So you can pretty much look at any place on the world and you'll have some data there. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, another thing is the, um, the topography information. So Dynamaps also lets you get um, topo info. Um, and that's, yeah, some points with some Z values that let you build a topography surface inside Dynamo and inside Revit. And that information comes from NASA's uh, SRTM database. Again, what made uh, me choose that data source is that it's uh, also something that is pretty comprehensive. Uh, it covers almost all the planets. So again, you can pretty much point at anything and you'll get some information. Now, it will not be as accurate as your, um, you know, uh, topography guy, uh, topography guy's um, uh, AutoCAD plan or, or site, site survey plan. It's just something that is going to be accurate enough for you to get some nice uh, context in order to, you know, uh, work uh, with the with site information in early stages of a project or just bring in some some 3D for uh, some VR or AR exper experience uh, because it's probably going to yeah it's it's always nice to have your buildings in context. Now another thing that Dynamaps makes use of is Bing Maps. Uh, Bing Maps here is mostly for the UI because um, it's pretty much like Google Maps. You have this map that you can browse uh, and uh, select the, the zone that you're going to be uh, in, uh, getting data from. And that's the tool that's going to help you make a geographic selection that then pulls out the information from OpenStreetMaps and uh, NASA's SRTM. So all of that brought together in Dynamo and pushed into Revit at the end. So yeah, these are the type of informations that we're going to be uh, looking at. There's building info, there's topography, there's roads. And it then looks something like this, uh, which is, well, rather cool, especially since it only takes usually about like four or five minutes to build all of this. And the idea here is to um, make one of those, uh, show you how exactly we can do to start from scratch and build a definition that's going to bring all site information or, I mean, this site information that you're, you're looking at. at. Uh, and um, so inside Dynamo and then push it to Revit. Now, just to, uh, uh, I mean, before we get started and to give you a little more information about the Dynamaps package, it consists of a view extension and a set of, a set of nodes. Usually packages are you know, either nodes, either view extension. This one is both. Uh, it has this uh, window, this, this browsing window that lets you uh, look at uh, maps and, and browse maps, etc. And it also has the nodes that let you uh, pull the information and um, play with it. And that's it for the slides part. Nice. I, so, like, I like short slideshows. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah, we all? Well, this, uh. <laughs> this one already felt too long to me. <laughs> all right. Now for the Dynamo part. So when you have data, Dynam uh, Dynamaps installed, so yeah, maybe one in thing we can go through is how to install it. It's as easy as opening the uh, package manager, looking for Dynamaps and downloading it. And you should get that uh, appear. Will that? So, sorry to interrupt, but will that uh, um, install the the view extension and the package? Absolutely, yes. Awesome. Both are uh, bundled together. So the nodes are going to be here, and the view extension is going to be here under the view tab. I just didn't want to crowd this with more things. Like I already have two view extensions out there. <laughs> I felt <laughs> like it would be too much. Um, 
Dynamaps is right here under view, and it's going to open the view extension. So that's the yeah that's 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 the the experience. That's the out of that's the the unboxing. Now, if you want to look at a specific location, this can be browsed just like a Google Maps uh, map. So it's a map control. You can zoom in, zoom out. There's also a satellite view. You can switch in between both. Um, and the other settings that you get here is so either to enter an email address, uh, sorry, not email address, just like an address. So for example, since we're in China mode tonight, I'm <laughs> going to look at Chicago. I've always wanted to go there, so let's let's travel. Uh, Chicago, Illinois. It's always nice to type more than the name of the city because mostly. Hey, hey Frank, what's the uh, what's the address of the office? Oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Tell me. Uh, Six twenty-five. Okay. North Michigan Avenue. Okay. I'm just going to add in Chicago there. And maybe Illinois. All right. Uh, just put IL, I think. Instead. Oh, sorry. I think it's just like the geocoding uh, API that I'm using maybe a little slow. Yeah. Did I, did I misspell something? Oh, North. Just put IL. There for, yeah, there you okay. go, Chicago. That's perfect. Yep, there is it is. That it? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> so not too far from uh, the beautiful Lakeshore Drive. No, yep, it's okay. right there. Not bad. So near north side. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've done this, we can start pulling out the live nodes of Dynamaps. Now the live nodes are the nodes that are going to uh, speak with this. Uh, you know, there are other nodes inside this package that are uh, made for geometry manipulation and, uh, and getting that 3D geometry built uh, in an easier way rather than having to build that whole thing yourself. Um, so those are the utilities and the Revit nodes. But for getting uh, site geometry out there in the canvas, you're going to have to use the live nodes. Let's look at all of them. So let's start with the buildings. Oh, I just made a huge mistake. <laughs> I opened automatic. it while I was on automatic <laughs> mode. Yeah, it did not. We all do me. that. I know. I <laughs> saw it happening in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that we've, we're here, we've pulled out this node. We can press this push to Dynamo button, and it's going to do you know that thing I said. So, so it's going to pull out some information from. Um, it's going to pull out some information from OpenStreetMaps for, for this part, for the buildings. And now, as you can see, we're, yeah, this, there's this little tower here. It's right here. So, you know, it's rather accurate. I mean, it's, it's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. OpenStreetMaps is awesome. Uh, why is this node orange? Okay, yeah, this actually I'm happy that we're, we're stumbling upon this because working with this type of data is most likely going to, uh, you know, Maybe the, the the units are going to be big. The, the the numbers are going to be big because we're looking at like this is more than uh, two kilometers wide. Uh, so you have to go to your Dynamo settings and look at the geometry scaling and at least move to large and apply those changes. I think it's going to be better from here. Uh, there you go. Now. You can actually, you know, just like move around and push the Dynamo, and this is going to update live. That's why it's called the live nodes. And it's taking the 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 region that you visually see in the Dynamaps window. Is that Absolutely. is that how it's yeah. constraining it? Exactly. Yes, it's taking the um, well the the extents of this window, mm -hmm. and then it's uh, using it to get the uh, data from that region in, in OpenStreetMaps. Now, um, if you go too crazy with the um, with the area, it might get a little long. Hmm. It should get there. You know, it's rather stable, uh, but it might take a little longer to, to compute. Uh, I feel like that's what's happening here, especially since we're looking at a region here that has apparently some smaller buildings, smaller den or yeah, bigger density, uh, which, again, may have been a mistake. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. Uh, so while they're but waiting... Uh, I seem to remember having right, to. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> so yeah, it just takes takes some time. Just wow. like maybe you ha you need to have faith. <laughs> yeah, I, and, I seem you know, to remember having to go into the 3D canvas and recenter. But when you're doing it, it seems to center itself uh, automatically. So I wonder yeah, if I'm right. doing something wrong. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know why <laughs> it might do that for you, but the way it's, it works is it, the, the center of this is this, the origin of the Dynamo workspace. The 3D oh, okay. Workspace. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, oh, could it be? Yeah? I wonder if it's because of the project I was working. Okay, I'll have to think about that. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, well, one right. question from YouTube before you jump on that I think is, sure, is, is valid now before you move on is um, somebody asked what's the maximum area. And so I guess... You know, at some point, I'm assuming, one. and and I know I've worked with OpenStreetMax too, so I do know that it usually ends up working. But I guess at some point, if you're zooming out and you're yeah. pretty far away in downtown Chicago, that's going to be a hell of a download. <laughs> yep, that's right. And at some point, it actually, the you know, it use, it's using web requests to um, to uh, OpenStreetMaps, and at some point, I think it just says um, like invalid request. Mm. So got it. Got know, it. it so it'll let you getting, know when you're too far. <laughs> yeah, it will let you know. But, uh, you know, I think before it lets you know, it might already be too far because it's going mm -hmm. to be too much data. And, you know, Dynamo can only handle so much. Uh, for example, here we already have like, I don't know, I haven't counted them. But from what I see, probably a thousand buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, and every building has a poly, a poly, a poly line that might have uh, 20 uh, little segments. So, yeah, it might get a little slow and it might crash your Dynamo. So that's something you need to be aware of. Uh, give it some time, but uh, also don't get too crazy with the, <laughs> with the area. Now, if we go back to the uh, region around your office and push to Dynamo again. Okay, here we go. So this is a much safer area to be working on, you know, in terms of scale, so that's great. And actually, from now on, we don't really need this part anymore because uh, this here is to browse. And then whenever you push to Dynamo, the data is made available for all of these nodes. So we can close this so we have more, you know, we save some, some screen space. Uh, and we can start looking at the other types of things that we cannot get from it. So the second node here on the building section is going to get us the, well, the footprints of the buildings, but as surfaces not as um, not as uh, poly curves anymore. And it also is going to give us the elevations of those buildings. Now, a little important information about these elevations is that um, it's either uh, going to find the information on OpenStreetMaps or it's not. And if it doesn't, what it does automatically is it then uh, generates a random value that is somewhere between the minimum and maximum heights from that area. You know, it just felt like it would make sense. Uh, sometimes you might get things that are a little funky again, but uh, in case you realize that something is really not right, if you like, look at these elevations here. Okay, I'm going to, okay. So you can pretty uh, easily identify the automatically generated values because they look like this, whereas the other ones looks like, look like this, right? So if you look at, I mean, if you just want to have all the um, buildings with no elevation information at I don't know, three meters or 10 meters, I'm speaking in meters here, I don't know how many feet that exactly is, but you can pretty much uh, just like separate the, the, the numbers that have uh, more, uh, more uh, uh, digits and uh, replace them with any value you like. So yeah, that's also, I think, something that's important to know when working with this data. So that's, I mean, full disclosure. Uh, all right, and that's pretty much it for the building information. Now, you can also get road data. And again, this node here, this nice looking node, actually gets a lot of um, road types from OpenStreetMaps. Uh, this um, terminology here, the names of these categories, this comes from OpenStreetMaps and it's widely documented online. So if you want to know exactly what, one, what each one of them refers to, that's available on, on OpenStreetMaps Wiki. Uh, you can bring all the, the roads, so you can check the all the uh, uh, radio button and, and run it. It's going to bring you that to your canvas. It might be a little too much, you know, because here we have, for example, the, the bus roads and the, the pedestrian ways, uh, roadways and all of that stuff, and it might be too much. So what I would recommend and what I usually do myself when I try to, you know, build a quick site for my, for my uh, early stage uh, analysis is uh, these, so I get the motorway, I get the uh, res residential, this, the primary, the secondary, 
uh, the tertiary, okay? Yeah, I think that should be enough. So if I run it, you'll get to see that, yeah, there's less stuff here, but we get the main stuff. So the main roads and, and everything. All right. Um, okay, now another thing that you can get, and this time from a different data source, is the topography. So you can get it as points or as polysurface. So let's do both. Let's run this one. This one also can take some time. And yeah, one thing I haven't said before I close the um, view extension is you can actually uh, make this uh, topography density points bigger. Uh, you know, by default, it's going to make a grid of 10 points by 10 points, so 100 points uh, uh, total. You can get more. Of course, the more you're going to ask for the uh, longer it's going to take, but the more precise also it will be. So there's that. As you can see here, we have a couple of points. I don't know how accurate that feels to you. I'm not, I mean. Uh, Chicago's pretty flat. That's, that looks <laughs> a little bumpy. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> um, yeah, well, <laughs> but you know, the thing is, I, I've tried this out in um, regions where I had some data and also uh, in regions that actually I've, yeah, no, I have not tried it in Chicago so much, but uh, I've tried it on the Grand Canyon, and that looked mm. uh, rather good because you had the canyons. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I can, maybe if we have some, we can do that at the end. But, okay, so let's look at the surface that this gives us. Yeah, definitely a little bumpy here. But, you know, you got to take what the data source gives you. So uh, that's it for topography. It's just like very straightforward. And then we have trees. So do you have trees in this section? Okay, yeah, there's a couple here. <laughs> are those pulled from OpenStreetMap? Yep, these yeah. are from OpenStreetMap as well. So uh, there's a question here if the uh, topo is coming from OpenStreetMaps or is that from some other source? Yeah, topo is from another source. It's from, uh, okay, again, Full disclosure, uh, let me show you exactly where it comes from. Uh, opening their website right here. It's coming from this place. Wait, why won't it? All right, so this thing here, it's called elevationapi.io. Um, it has a free tier, but uh, Dynamaps uses more than that. There's actually, uh, you know, it, <laughs> we actually uh, make put, put some money in there for people to use it. So it's not a tool that's free for for me, <laughs> but oh, it's wow. free to use. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's really not that expensive. So it's like uh, I don't know, like a, probably like a hundred dollars a year or something like that. But um, we got to get Bimbox to to set you up on that. <laughs> yeah, well, or, yeah, or you can do a, something you for you saying Bimbox over and over again. You can do a Patreon again. too, right? Patreon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I've thought about that. I've thought about that too. I've also, I can you know, guarantee received... you that that people, anyone using this, would 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 give you more than enough money to pay for the the, the topography points. Just my 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 gut instinct is that uh, anyone who can, yeah. who get, anyone who uses it once to get accurate topography and not have to do it themselves uh, would would give you a hundred dollars each it. I well guarantee worth it. Money. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I well worth well, for sure <laughs> yeah. okay well that's good to know because you know I've been thinking about it and at some point I was like maybe I should just let people enter their API to key tokens and mm. you know get their own thing going on but maybe that's uh, something else to manage for people that they don't want to have to deal with and maybe patreon is a good way to, to deal yeah. with this also so interesting sure. uh, but yeah, I mean, that's just a, a piece of information. So uh, that's where the, the topography comes from. And that, that, uh, that data source, that API, pulls its information from NASA's as RTM, uh, topography information. Um, all right, now that's all the data that we're going to get. And this is like pretty raw, right? So it's just like some geometry. Now Dynamaps also has a couple of utility tools that are here for you to be able to build things that look like this. So this little preview here tells you pretty much what you can get uh, inside Dynamo. And let's 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 go ahead and do it. So this one asks for the footprint surfaces. We're going to get this from here. 
and the building elevations that comes from here, then the topo poly surface, which is right here. And finally, oh, it asks us for, uh, I mean, if we want to crop the geometry to the topography. So as you can see, you know, whenever a building is, uh, has at least one point in the uh, geometry, I mean, in the, um, the zone, it's going to give you the full building. So it's not neatly cut. Uh, this node offers to do that for you and it's going to adjust it to the topography. So let's go ahead and tell it yes, please. and run it. Hopefully it's not going to take forever. I think the, the, the region so that excited. we... So <laughs> excited. I think you probably should have picked a less dense populated area. <laughs> ah, no, it's fine. No, yeah, it, yeah, it's there it is, look at that. Yeah. That didn't nice. take long. Look at that. What was that, about a minute? There wasn't yeah, even that a minute. Wasn't bad. No, it wasn't even... <laughs> Honestly, yeah, you know, for a region this large, it's you're, you're safe to work. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's going to be okay. Uh, in my uh, blog post about Dynamas, when it first came out, I, I posted a blog post where I, I really modeled a nice chunk of Ferris. It was, it was very large. It took some time to compute, but it didn't crash. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, you can't guarantee it won't crash if you go crazy with this. How many of the buildings in Paris have actual elevations? Uh, many, a lot, many? a lot yeah. of them, yeah. It was, and um, one thing that I did also is I noticed that there was a whole uh, avenue in front of where I lived that didn't have its tree. Uh, located in OpenStreetMap, so I just went ahead and added them right there in OpenStreetMaps, and then it, they were available in Dynamaps. Get out of here. Wow, that yeah. is cool. <laughs> nice. That okay, is so really cool. Let's just make it look a little nicer, and I'm going to use a node that comes from uh, the data shapes package this time. It's called Geom Preview, and it lets you, um, you know, just like easily set the, um... okay, let's hide all of this. Okay, green was not a good choice. Uh, something neutral. Okay, blue, better. All right. Uh, I gave it some transparency. Okay. So now we have our 3D buildings. Um, if we want to have the topography and the roads, we can come to the roads part of the utils and uh, get our roads out as surfaces. Now this one also uh, requests some inputs. First one is the poly curves that come from this node here, the roads as poly curves. And it also asks you to enter the widths manually because that information is actually not available in OpenStreetMaps and they, it wasn't available anywhere. So, you know, the thing here is you have to decide how why do you want your roads to be in your in your set uh, 3D and and that's pretty much it. If you want to have different um, widths for the different types of roads, for example, the primary is to be uh, five meters wide and the the, the motorway is to be eight meters wide. You can also have a couple of these nodes pulled out and have each one of them return that specific type of road and then have uh, specific widths per per road. So that's how you could deal with it. For now, I'm just going to um, give it a generic five meter wide um, value and hope that that works well too. That's actually really cool because my, my, my experience with OpenStreetMaps is in Lumion or Twin Motion, and uh, you don't really have much control over the width. And so yeah. you, know, you, you get the roads, but then it's like the, the, you know, there's no difference between a highway that you know is 35 feet long or wide or whatever and, and a side road. They're all the same. <laughs> yep. That's right. That's, so that's right. awesome. And, you know, that's also the great thing about Dynamo is, you know, you have, you know, plugins. I, I could have made a plugin out of this in Revit that you, like, you click and gets you the geometry. But since it's in Dynamo, you can do so many more things mm -hmm. with it and people can get more creative. So that's that's also uh, what I like about it being a, being a Dynamo package rather than, than a plugin. Mm -hmm. Somebody on uh, YouTube asked if you can just show real quickly what the two roads would look like. So maybe just pull out another road type oh. and make it a different width, if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I'm actually interested uh, to see it myself. So. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Let's do this. So, for example, let's say the motorway is not coming out of this one anymore, right? And it's going to be uh, coming from here. 
I'm hoping that there has to be a model way here, right? <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> Paul's like, I don't know where we are. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. By, I'm confused by the big hill on North Michigan Avenue. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've noticed yeah. with, with some city data um, and, and topography, uh, there's the extremes are just a little more extreme. I think maybe because the buildings are in the way when, you know, with the NASA, I'm not really sure, but like we've done a few things in Boston and there's, you know, a, a slight hill is like a mountain in some locations. So yeah. I don't know if it's, yeah. I don't know if it's because of the tall buildings maybe messing with it. I'm not sure. It could be that. It could be that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am uh, like, yeah, <laughs> I think it could be something like that. So right here we have, a problem because well it's not able to well, build maybe those that. were all motorways <laughs> <laughs> well actually it turned out it turns out there were no motorways at all <laughs> so I had to switch that to a primary so I turned off the primary from here and turned it on turn mm -hmm. turned them on here uh, and it looks like these um, I don't know you know when you take this off it's not able to build it anymore Huh. Well, in my in my usage of this, I found that a lot of those categories are often not there. And mm. I, yeah. I was actually really impressed that you got the widths of the roads because that usually fails for me. So, um, um, yeah, OK, I, 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 I do get that a lot, too. I do get that a lot because, uh, again, the way this works is very not that complicated. You know, it takes the poly curve and it tries to offset it and then build yeah. a surface. And then it tries to build a polysurface from all the surfaces by like, uh, I mean, stitching them together. Hmm. So that's an operation that's going to work. You know, that's yeah, probably one of the things that fail the most uh, because, you know, you're never sure if things are not uh, like. I mean, if they yeah. are touching or if they're not. So, you know, Chicago case, probably had a good a good chance of doing it because it's just a grid but yeah with more complicated roads it's probably harder to do that well, right? apparently when the, the the primary roads are missing it's uh it fails oh, uh okay now so yeah i guess let's go back to working with the primaries <laughs> put it on put it in all together sure. uh, i had what? another question here that's yeah, not yeah. not related to roads but i wanted sure. to get it in um it uh they were asking um if we could create, uh, it says, can we create a data dictionary with Dynamaps and switch out low poly Sears Tower with a high poly Sears Tower? So I'm assuming they already have a model of the Sears Tower and they want to, well, the Willis Tower is what it's officially now <laughs> yeah. called, right? But, uh, you know, they want to uh, swap that in. Do, do you have any way, any oh, suggestion okay. or any way to do that? Um, well, that was actually I from Moses, your friend Moses. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> challenging you. See that nice the friends yeah, always okay. challenge you the most, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, uh, the way I'd answer that is that you could, um, well, inside Dynamo, it's going to be a little harder because then you'd have to like, you know, I guess you could you could uh, do this and figure out which one it is and just like take it out, right? So you can uh, you can um, navigate this uh, this buildings list and remove that one and then add yours. It would be probably easier to do in Revit. You know, once you bake all this geometry inside the Revit environment, you can like those come out as separate uh, solids, and you can just select the Sears tower that's generated by Dynamaps and delete it, and then put in the one you uh, you want the one you already have, and that is more detailed. Does that there's sound? a there's a project I'm working on where I got. Uh, several hundred buildings out of this and um, I just made a project parameter that was called hide and it's a checkbox and I can just check it and it hides the ones that I don't want to see all right so, yeah yeah that'll do uh, that I think this is along the same lines actually someone had a question I know OpenStreetMaps has somewhat of uh, historical data too within its database is mm -hmm. that is that something that you can access within this or, or no like when you're doing the initial take or or no not really um, you know, one thing that that it doesn't do, but it really could, uh, and it wouldn't even be that much uh, work to 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 put it to get it in there, is uh, the uh, like the ID of the of the building. You mm -hmm. know, that would come out with this, and then you'd be able to uh, mm -hmm. you'd have this correspondence. or yeah, is that a word between mm -hmm. uh, whatever you have here and 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 the OpenStreetMaps uh, um, data source, 
and that would probably open the door to many other informations that you could like bring in uh, yourself because because you know the idea of the building in, in mm. OpenStreetMaps. So that when, would, you, when did you say cool. you're adding that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't I haven't worked in this project for a while, and it really like it, it, I, I'm, I'm I, it, it would be nice to to get back to it. Yeah, I could add that. I could add that. I'm sure this group will give you plenty of suggestions on uh, yeah. features. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm we had a question down, about Civil 3D. I don't know if you've, uh, I barely have any experience in Civil 3D, but Civil 3D does support Dynamo now. So do yep. you, um, have you explored uh, whether or not Dynamaps works inside Civil 3D? I have, and it does, uh, because it's awesome. been made free from Civil 3D. So you can even do all of this in Sandbox. You know, the only part that's not going to work is the Revit part, because okay. it, yeah. it has some uh, utilities to build to bake stuff into Revit. But uh, Civil 3D also has some node creation, uh, no, uh, geometry baking, sorry, nodes. And you can bake all this geometry inside Civil 3D. It will work. Uh, same for Formit. So, you know, basically any uh, software that has a Dynamo integration can use Dynamaps. Nice. Okay. All right. So now if we try and get that last part, which is the projection of the roads on the topography. So the topo poly surface and the road surface, those are the inputs. Let's turn this one off. Let's run this this one also is yeah one of the <laughs> li likely to fail ones again this you know this was built in order to um like help uh but everything that's happening in here is just like geometry manipulation using the uh the uh design script uh and, and protocol yeah protocol design script methods so basically stuff that you can do inside dynamo so in case you have trouble with these nodes, you know, nothing uh, is preventing you from using the initial source, which is just like the, the road poly curves and try and build those roads inside Dynamo. That's the cool thing again about it being a Dynamo package. When it fails, you get to fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I resorted to doing a lot of this manually in Revit, I'm embarrassed to say, but um, <laughs> that was because the site I was working on didn't didn't give me good topo data, so. okay. Um, was it in Chicago too? No, it's in Volterra, Italy. You can uh, just oh, put in gosh. Volterra, Italy sometime, and you'll see what comes up. The buildings were great, but um, but the uh, the topo was just flat. It didn't okay. it didn't have any change at all. So um, and Vol Volterra, Italy is, is a Tuscan hill town, so it definitely needed to have some some uh, heights, and there wasn't any. It was literally a flat plane that came out. So okay. Um, um, when was that? Because yeah, that sometimes happens to me too. Uh, I'm like I, I'm suspecting it may be related to the elevation API thing because uh, sometimes it will return that, and then I try it again like a little later, and I get some some some. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I could try it again. Yeah, maybe give it another shot. Uh, let me know if it really is failing completely. Okay, uh, I sure will. Yeah, we can take that offline. Okay. Yeah. All right, so what I'm doing here is again just some visualization stuff. So I'm doing, going to. So you said this off. geometry preview that's part of da data shapes. Oh uh, yeah, this one is yeah. part of data shapes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, I want it to be. Um, what else? Let's say like this. Okay, and uh, the top topography. Let's make it like blue. It's going to be all right. Wow. Awesome. <clears throat> and then the trees, if we if we want. <laughs> I have never has... gotten the trees to work, so I'm excited <laughs> about this. Okay, no, these, <laughs> these are going to work. Uh, these I'm very confident about. So, yeah. you know, well, I've never found a site to... that had tree points. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's another story for sure. You yeah. know, I've also, you know, I, I made a, a little uh, demo that was in Central Park. And again, I realized that there weren't that many trees in Central Park. So I went in, <laughs> into uh, OpenStreetMaps and added them. Ah. <laughs> and now there are trees in Central Park in OpenStreetMaps. Oh, well, that's great. Well, then I guess that's what I need to do is just add a bunch of trees in Volterra. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone will uh, benefit from that work. So let's not waste the time. 
uh, points project points. All right, so we're going to need to project those three points onto the uh, poly surface. Ah, uh, there's a the step Z I didn't <laughs> Yeah, because they're coming at zero at the zero level, if not. Right. So this really shouldn't take too long. Here we are now okay. with our nice three points that are nicely located. And then this is going to generate some little uh, lollipop trees. Nice. <laughs> Frank, and then there you, you go, right? Those. Yeah. yeah. Frank and I keep talking about trees. We're trying to decide what the best approach is for his... Uh, for his company library and uh yeah you know those look pretty good frank what do you think <laughs> <laughs> a lollipop uh, he's, he's not yeah, i like lollipop it. trees they get the job done yeah you know <laughs> at this stage i believe they do but yeah okay so yeah that's it you know <laughs> that looks we, fantastic I mean, that's awesome yeah we uh we took our time doing it if uh if someone just like uh, gets going. I think it's a matter of maybe five or yes, four or five minutes to get your site geometry. It might get a little longer if the roads are giving you a hard time and you have to rebuild some of that logic. But if you're lucky enough to get a site that has good information, and to be fair, that's like probably 80 to 90 percent of the times. Um, I mean, that's my, the estimate from my experience. Um, you you should get there. Uh, you should get there in a time that is really not too long. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's for the geometry inside Dynamo part. Now this here you can bake into Formit or bake into Civil 3D. Now if you want to bake it into Revit, it's another story because there are several ways to bake stuff into, inside Revit. So first thing, you know, you could go the direct shape road and that will build some geometry that is then kind of dead, you know, and that you don't really get to um, manipulate. So that's why there are some utility nodes here that are made for you to build, to bake that stuff into Revit with a little more, uh, uh, you know, like a, a little more interesting uh, geometry and, and data. So this one here, it builds the Revit buildings. All it asks for is the uh, footprint surface for of the buildings, the building elevations, the category you would like to build that geometry into. So, you know, you could give it the site category or the generic model or whatever you want. And the top, the topography surface, so it um, um, also builds those buildings uh, at the correct heights. The adjust to topo, which is the same as here, it's going to slice it, cut it nicely along the topo lines. And also, if you want to generate a building path, uh, because there's also here a tool that, oh, sorry. That is going to uh, build, actually, you know, there's a node here that we can use without even, I mean, it's not even from the data, the Dynamaps package. It's like out of the box. It builds the, topog the Revit topography from points and it will work very well with this output from the, the topo points node. Let's freeze those for now and start with topography. Let's do things. Let's do first things first. We also get to see this wonderful tour, tool called, called Orchestra. Uh, all right. Here's the topography. Okay, so yeah. It looks like it might not be completely accurate for <laughs> Chicago. Yeah, there's definitely <laughs> more <laughs> more hype. Chicago Frisco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, and um, I think what I've heard earlier is, is correct. I think that the high buildings may, might be messing with it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so there's that first. Now, another thing you can do is build the buildings... Let's uh, use this node. So it's just one node that takes care of everything, pretty much. Uh, categories. I love that Let's, you can set the categories. That's nice. Yeah, it's important, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the topo surface. So it wants this. 
uh, adjust to topo. Let's use the same Boolean to say yes to the same thing. And then uh, generate building pad. Let's say yes. OK. Go. Yeah, that definitely looks pretty hilly for Chicago, huh, Paul? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little bit. It's all right. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I think it's funny that it made Chicago hilly and Volterra flat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not very many tall buildings in Volterra, right? No. <laughs> Interesting. And by the way, you know, this node here, the one that's going to build the stuff inside uh, Revit, it doesn't need any of this geometry here. So this, this here is really for Dynamo and Format and Civil 3D. But if you want stuff in Revit, you don't need to build this inside Dynamo. You'll go faster. Oh, so you're saying you can just go directly to these other nodes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So while this is processing, one of the questions I had is um, I couldn't figure out any way to save your selection of area. I mean, I got quite good at zooming into the same part of the map and getting really close. But it uh, is there any way to save that rectangle? Sure. Um, that's yeah. That's a, that's a very it's a fair question, and you know it's something that was on the roadmap but never got done. I, I, okay. I, again, I, I'm going to write it down again because it it just like makes sense. Now, uh, another way you could work with that, if you want to be very precise about the the region that you're going to look at, is you know in the view extension there was this little uh, take me to project. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, site and, uh, location, and that is going to use the um, uh, the latitude and longitude information that you're going to enter in your project base point in Revit. Right, but I was always so, zooming out from that, so that was Okay, my yeah, zoom in, yeah. yeah, all right, all right, yeah, I yeah. understood. Yeah, because it would zoom in really close on that. So yeah, it takes me there first, but then I, uh, yeah, okay, that's No, you're fine. right, yeah. that's, that's something that it doesn't do, but it should, for sure. <laughs> So another um, another good question on, on YouTube just came in. I think it was Alberto. I forgot who it was. Sorry. I think it's Alberto. Um, he asked, so, so, you know, all these nodes you're setting up, um, if you have them set up, let's say you're not building geometry in, 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 uh, in Dynamo and you're just pushing this to Revit, um, can you just go back, change the location, push it, and then run it again? Is, is, that, is that how you would change locations, or do you have to rebuild this thing all the time? Um, well... You know, uh, it really depends. Uh, if the um, if the so if the geometry has already been built inside Revit and you just like change locations and uh, hit run again, I'm afraid it's it's going to crash uh, because uh, there's a lot of stuff happening. Mm -hmm. But there are two conditions where I think it, I mean where it works and from my experience is where when you uh, first of all don't work with the regions that are too high too too large, just mm -hmm. like just. Uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing is um, maybe try and turn off every uh, thing that builds geometry inside Dynamo mm -hmm. or at least freeze it when you want to switch uh, locations mm -hmm. and hit run first on the live nodes, those that get the data, right? Mm -hmm. So when that is pulled, you can reactivate the rest and, and things should go smoothly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and I think I think probably, I mean, I don't, I don't want to speak for him, but I think probably what he's, what he's asking is, um, you know, setting all this up, and then let's say you create a new project, and you just go for another location. In theory, you okay. could still reuse this script for that. Then, right? yeah. You know, what you're saying exactly. is in the same project. If you start switching locations, then you might start uh, messing some stuff up. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that, oh, then this, only the second part applies. Then, so yeah, okay, the part okay. where, where you, they need to freeze the geometry creation. Uh, so yeah, first got get it, the data. Got it. And Makes then sense. Yep. So what's it doing now? Is it is I see all the regenerating in the background. Is it yep. is it creating it's, each it's, individual building in on the Revit yeah, side of it? That's right. And what's yeah. taking a little longer? And I think that you know that's why I don't know if you noticed, but I hesitated a little bit about the generate building. <laughs> the part, building part. Pass, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm surprised I you clicked that, that myself. Because <laughs> uh, that that seemed like it would be. <laughs> well, it's cool because when you when you do a section across the buildings, it's really neat. You know, the buildings are nicely uh, embedded into the the topography. Uh, they're not just like on top of it. Yeah, so, no, that sounds so great. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, but um, we think, should have done a smaller site though. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> or maybe not such a hilly Chicago. <laughs> uh, well, you know. I like this new Chicago. It's, uh... yeah, it's, a, it's a project. <laughs> I heard so, something about... Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. The, the, uh, the geometry that you're creating, it's not a direct shape, but it's kind of similar, right? Because it's pretty much a closed box once it comes in. I mean, you can't, you can't edit that geometry in any way. Uh, no, you cannot edit it, but you can like delete them, uh, and it also gives it a ge uh, a category. But yeah, it is, you know, it is a direct shape. It yeah, is. yeah, the category was super helpful. Um, I did try the mass category though, and sadly, uh, wall by face and stuff like that didn't didn't recognize it. So is that oh, because right. it's a direct shape or? Yes, yes, yes. You're you're correct okay. about that. It, it's a direct shape for sure. Yeah, it, it is one. Uh, and so the direct shape node from uh, Dynamo would uh, perform pretty much, uh, I mean, just just as well. Hmm. Yeah. So, so someone on YouTube is asking, so, uh, Gene Paul, thanks for joining, buddy, um, uh, was asking, um, is it possible to you know, use different categories? So I think uh, uh, rolling back, I guess that would be depending on how the data comes in. But I think what you said is you're not bringing in the building ID data, right? So you're pretty much you're pretty much only assigning one category for all these buildings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of what I thought the answer was going to be. <laughs> well, you'd have to separate out in Dynamo then, right? If like you, yeah. make could, batches of them that. in different nodes mm -hmm. and do them mm -hmm. in different categories that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually did two separate nodes on my experiment where I had one going to the site category and one collection going to the mass category when I was mm -hmm. playing with that mass idea. So I actually had two copies of, of every building, but there's no reason why you couldn't split them out first and send them to the two separate nodes and put them on two different categories. Definitely, yeah. No, yeah. that would work. You just need to find like a, a, an interesting way to split them in. As Yeah, yeah. Uh, since there's no ID or anything, it might be a little tedious. So is there a... If you wanted to go back to an, to one that you built with this, like you know, so I've got this model that I've way processed since since I originally created it. Okay. If I wanted to go back to it and process it more in Dynamo, what object um, those those uh, I mean, I know I could select elements on the site category and maybe try and do something to that. Or is are they a, a type of object? Like, is there a selection node in Dynamo that would reselect these buildings and allow you to? You know, mm. to, to do stuff to them in Dynamo. What what would what kind of object would they be considered by Dynamo? Um, they would be. I mean, uh, they are direct shapes. They are from the yeah. They have that category information. They also have you know they're named. I think they have the Dynamaps in their name. So okay. That also that might be a way to to select them. All right. Yeah, because I'm just trying to think like post processing, especially yep. since you can't go back to the same exact spot on the map, yeah. you know, and you don't want everything to be shifted. You know, you could just uh, maybe uh, fiddle with it that way. Um, and like you want to like uh, I don't know, generate some facade work on on the yeah. The or, well, yeah. what I would really love to be able to do is for the for the ones that are phony heights, I'd love to be able to just have a grip on the top there that you could oh, yeah. you know that you could play with the height. Um, mm -hmm. What I've been doing is literally copying them on top of each other. Um, yeah, yeah. To, to kind of stack them up to get the height. Um, but I don't know if you have a more clever way than that to uh, to get to the height. Or I well, guess uh, yeah. ahead of time, you have to feed in a real height. But since I didn't do that, now that I've got, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I'm stuck with what I got. So, you know, um, one one node that might help you with that is uh, there uh, one from Spring Nodes. Uh, it's called Geometry Instance by Geometry. And uh, oh, if you okay. feed it, if you feed it this geometry, so this uh, ge geometry that we've built inside Dynamo, yeah. it's going to build uh, each building as a family, right? And like it's going to put it in its, in its right place. And the cool thing about it is it, I think what it does behind the scenes is it's, it exports it as an SAT and then imports it inside the family. But that oh. is very well recognized. And then you get the little handles and you can, you can adjust the heights. Oh, that's okay. Cool. I will definitely check that out. So that's Spring Nodes. All right. I yeah, think Spring I already have that installed, actually. Oh, awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, you you most probably do. It's, yeah. it's a it's an awesome one. I just like I haven't tried with that many uh, build. I mean, that many geometries to bake. But uh, since it's just extrusions, it should work. Yeah. Right. Okay. The cool. building the, the building pads really were a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. It, it, Gives us time to answer questions, so that's cool. Yeah, uh, we're a little light on questions on uh, on my side. Jeff, you got any? 
um, there's a couple of folks that are still interested in the historical data. And so um, I guess uh, I think the answer before was that you're not currently pulling that in, but the reality is it, it does exist in OpenStreetMap, right? So in theory, yeah. down the road, that could be something you grab. But um, I guess I guess uh, the question was if if the historic data was there, you know, is there a way to bring in you know both? And so I think uh, that's sort of a hypothetical because the historical data is not there. <laughs> well, I actually did try understanding like it didn't occur to me to go to the documentation like mustafa said that would have been logical so i actually went manually one category at a time through that roads list um kind of seeing what it would give me uh in volterra and a lot of the historical stuff was actually categorized that way it was coming in through that roads node so like um uh city walls and uh archaeological oh, wow. sites and things like that and they were just lines really you okay. know um kind of of that area so um I was then able to take those lines and do something with them, you know, like I could either turn them into Revit lines or I could turn them into walls or, you know, things like that. So, um, but that was specifically in Volterra. I haven't tried it in other cities with historical data, but that's what Mm -hmm. I experienced there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I think it's going to come down to what exists in OpenStreetMap, but then also what's pulled in. Um, Somebody had a good question as well. Um, um, I think it was Alberto again. Um, what about materials? So, um, as these, you know, as topos going in, as the roads are going in, as the buildings are going into Revit, are, are you assigning yeah. materials to it or you have the ability after the fact in Revit to assign materials? Okay. So for the, the buildings, uh, you, you know, it, it's direct shapes and it doesn't really have a material. No. So it's just going to category that, you know, if you use a category that is uh, isolated enough, you might be able to go to change its its category. You know, in the object styles, uh, mm-hmm. have a, a material assigned to that category. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, how satisfying uh, an answer that is, but uh, mm-hmm. otherwise, if you re- if it really matters to you, um, you could go through the the built-in direct shape nodes, uh, and those will build the geometry uh, with uh, a category inform- uh, sorry a material information. They, they let you do that. I just um, used filters um, cause oh, I, yeah. bec- because you were able to add a project parameter to the category. So yeah, the site yeah. category, I just added a series of checkbox parameters. And then based on how those were checked, I just created filters to I, I colored them with filters. It's not the same thing as materials, but mm-hmm. um, that's the way I because I felt for site information, it was fine. It just needed to be a different color. You know, yeah, it's, it's programmatic, right? It's just like, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there's a there's a question here um, again from Moses. Uh, is there any overlap or integration between data shapes and Dynamaps? Um, well, no, it's really two separate things. The only uh, part of data shapes that's really useful to Dynamaps, I believe, is uh, the jump preview part because it lets you uh, well uh, have nice visuals uh, faster without having to like you know. This is an, an, uh, a replacement to the uh, geometry color by geometry color, and then you need to build a color node and give it A, R, J, B, G, B information and all. So it's just like this. This is the only part of data, data shapes that's really useful to, to Dynamaps. <laughs> yeah, that is so much easier than the built-in nodes. I like that. That was really cool. Uh, otherwise, no, it's, uh, it's two separate things. So how do you know when it's dead versus, I mean, I guess it's still regenerating in the background, yeah. right? So No, it really okay. isn't dead. It's just like, it's, yeah. it's my bad. You know, it probably yeah. would go faster if I just like killed it and, and started over. <laughs> so I don't know. Do you guys feel like I should do that? <laughs> I, it's, I, 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 I think it. people are going to want to see it in Revit. I, I don't know what you think is going to be the quickest point to uh, get to that. Yeah. I also okay. don't want you, you know to what? blow things up. <laughs> here's, here's a suggestion. Let's do it while this is... Uh, oh yeah, um, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of folks asking your computer specs, and I want to say I'm, I'm assuming your computer specs are pretty good, and this is nothing to do with computer specs. This is oh, no, no, this it, is yeah, my this is churning. Right. This is this is doing, and and by you opening another version of Revit while doing this, I think that'll show everyone that it doesn't matter your computer. This is just computers doing computer things <laughs> for a lot <Yeah>. of buildings. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, especially since the building pads, it's really like drawing those using the lines. And uh, again, in in, in, um, in open street maps, a building might look like it's square, but it might have a hundred points. Mm. And so it has, it's a hundred curves inside that poly curve. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. uh, drawing the, the building pad is just like really, really slow. 
and then and then finishing it and and, cock, and doing all the Revit stuff behind it all. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um. So somebody asked, I guess, while you're doing that too. Um. Um. I think. Uh. So Lisa. Lisa asked. Hey, Lisa. Um. When we're bringing this info into Revit, we don't have to use the building geometry from Dynamap. So I think kind of what she's getting along the lines of is what you were saying, Paul. Once this is in there, and I guess once you bring it in, we'll see it. But each individual building is its own data shape once it's in there. Yeah, and then yeah, kind of, they're separate objects once they're in. Right. Yeah. So, so in theory, you could bring in everything and delete stuff you didn't need or hide it. You know, probably is probably the better way to do exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> filter it, give a parameter like Paul was saying, you know, and use a filter to hide it. Um, so I think I think that's probably hopefully that answers your question, Lisa. But that's a good question because, you know, if you if you have a building going in a location where there's an existing building, then you might want to hide it, right? Uh, Ryan yeah. asks if you can tell us a little bit about what orchestra is that I guess oh. you have over there. Oh. That's, uh, that's a good um, question. Very yeah, good question. I don't question, know if you Ryan. can walk and chew bubblegum here. <laughs> at the, you know, but, uh. Uh, well, orchestra is a uh, platform. It's an online platform that is built uh, to make uh, the deployment of Dynamo content much, much easier and safer. Um, mm. Because, uh, well... If you guys have already tried to send uh, or to keep track of a large amount of Dynamo scripts with a large amount of, I mean, with a large group of people, it gets really hard at some point to make sure everyone has the right version of the definition, the right uh, versions of the packages installed, the right documentation, and all of that, you know, type of thing that can get it to work. So, from my experience, it's it's really really hard to deploy uh, Dynamo content uh, at a large scale. And uh, that's that's that was so that was the the um, uh, the concept that's what I noticed and uh, the platform was built from that. So it's an online uh, platform. It lets you put all your content on that platform in an organized and documented way, and then you can uh, grant people access to your content and also uh, manage their package settings from the platform. Uh, oh wow! Just like. Describing it with words here, yeah, it's it's uh usually takes around like an hour to give a, a full tour of it. Well, we'll have you actually... back for, uh, oh, for yeah. that for sure. Then <laughs> would love that. <laughs> and yeah, Thanks. it also has uh, integrations inside Revit, inside uh, Dynamo. It also has integration in, in Rhino because it, it it also deals with the deployment of uh, Grasshopper uh, uh, content. We're getting thumbs ups and awesomes and <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. a very cool. So that's that's probably the reason why uh, Dynamaps hasn't had. Uh, I, he that says much. I ran into it. I ran into that last week for 13 offices around the U.S. So sounds like uh, <laughs> sounds like I'm checking that out. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of interest in in deploying Dynamo. So. That's, that's definitely good we topic. are uh, we are near the top of the hour. I just wanted to let you know that. I mean, I'm fine. Uh, if you're fine, we can keep going. But just for anyone that, um, uh, you know, was thinking we were ending in an hour, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, so oh, you yeah. can consider this the overtime part. Um, this is fine. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think everyone but, is is, uh, is patiently waiting, seeing those buildings in Revit. So maybe we should I do, a, right. maybe we should do a really right. small area. Uh, yeah, <laughs> real quick, just to show everyone how it all connects. Yeah, I think yep. I think we okay. and we could see the way that you don't have to do the dynamo geometry first that way too. So that's, that's cool. true. Yeah, that I yeah. like the way you look at it positively. That you guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the fortieth live episode. Believe me, I'm, I'm, I'm re I know I know how live demo goes. <laughs> this is thank perfect. you. Thank and you. People are still <laughs> hanging on and, and 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 asking questions and intrigued. So, no, don't don't feel any pressure. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I cannot read because yes, I know why. Uh, let's turn this one to manual and uh, go to. Um, I'm hoping that this is not going to interact with the rest, but anyway. So yeah, we'll see. okay, let's try your your location in Italy. What was? Oh the... okay, uh, Volterra, Italy. Volterra, like this. Two two R's. Are we there? That... Yeah, but I wouldn't zoom out that far. <laughs> uh, move, uh, pan it up a little bit. Yeah, that that's not an interesting spot. That's a cemetery. Um, yeah, go into the more of the downtown area there, like the yeah, middle, like... right in there. Yeah. All right. Just a little so... closer. I would go a little closer to speed it up. 
All right. Okay. That should be good. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see if we get that to work. Okay. Now I know what's going on here. My Revit is in millimeters, and this is also a good thing to know. <laughs> otherwise the scale is just too large uh geometry scaling large apply changes run okay better all right so we're in a diff completely different uh type of uh <laughs> area okay um so topography yeah it's more like what you have in paris right yeah <laughs> i like it Just check in if this one has made any progress. <laughs> okay, so see, it's not that flat here. Oh, see, okay, you're yeah, that's I did not get that. So interesting. All right, I'll definitely have to try it again. <laughs> I wonder uh, if it's just because I'm doing too big of an area. It could be. Yeah. It may be. It may be looking flatter than it actually is because it's very large. Yeah. But again, maybe it's just uh, that elevation API failing. Uh, wouldn't be the first time. I notice it or it's reported to me. Okay, so we have this. Uh, we need topography by points. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, see that? That yeah. definitely looks a little better. Cool. Um, and that then- Kind of looks like Michigan Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does look a little like Chicago, huh? <laughs> yeah. Where do you see the buildings? <laughs> okay, so oh, I have not pulled those out yet. So elevation, footprint, category. Did that the last Top time too. Surface, yeah. <laughs> I'm con I'm a consistent guy. Okay. <laughs> Let's not do building pads this time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's by default it's set to false, but let's give it a false anyway because we, we really don't want that to happen again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll see how faster it's it should go. What's what does it say now? Um. The input argument extrusion must be positive. Okay, is there anything null here or negative or equal to zero? Okay, yeah, there's absolutely no elevation data for the buildings. So that's why it's doing that. <laughs> uh, so you have to give it something? Yep, I'm going to give it something. Uh, the item is three and the amount is count of this. I didn't have to do any of this. How did it? Uh, I wonder where I got the elevation data from. Um, yeah, Different you know if it's location. zero everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Much faster, right? Yeah, look at uh, that. Yeah, you got to project it to the surface. Oh, maybe though, right? that's why yours was so flat too. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's. Yeah, it did somehow project it. It's just like didn't go high enough. Three was not enough. Mm. I'll make it 30. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> but as you can see, it's much, much faster when it's uh Yeah, yeah. When it's uh using the when it's not trying to build a building pad. Yep. But and go ahead and uh, select one of those and show folks yep. what it what it gave them. Yep. You know. So you select that, it's a site. Uh, as you said, you can uh, give it a face. That's interest. That's an important oh, thing. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. Uh, you can also give it, like associate parameters to them. You can delete them, hide them, uh, remove the part that is what your project is going to be maybe or something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I would still hide them personally. I think that's better. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, some uh, people 
always ask me, well, why do you make a parameter and hide it? You know, why not just use a work set? Because I hate adding a bunch of extra work sets, but I know that it's way more popular to add work sets. So yeah, of course you could do it with a work set, but I just, I try and keep my work sets to a minimum. You know, yeah. I just feel like it's one more thing that you got to manage. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. That's true. But, uh, but I, you know, I am, yeah, I am there's a bunch of ways to, I am adamantly yeah. against, uh, work sets for visibility well, <laughs> personally <yeah. laughs> so i, I well, like you know, your people... i like your filtering and, and parameters better for that <laughs> well because i can do uh, different things with them a lot easier that mm -hmm. way in different views but um you know i i think the only time i like doing a work set for visibility is when you absolutely want it off almost every time and you mm -hmm. very rarely want it on because that's the only tool that starts off with that setting you could say it's it's mm -hmm. off unless i tell it otherwise you know right, so right. that's to me the only good thing about work set visibility versus other kinds of visibility right. but we have like what 60 ways to control the visibility of things we, we yeah. want to add yeah. more you know yeah. like <laughs> so, so yeah true. but it's a matter of preference mm -hmm. so awesome so yep. you're putting roads on now well, yeah, let's uh, see uh, if you get yeah. any success here. You're in a much smaller area than I am. I mean, I literally did the whole medieval walled city. So um, oh, look at that. Awesome. See, there we go. Yeah, no, You've got the magic good. touch, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, so folks who are asking about materials, you can see that, that that's actually, is that just a subregion in the topography? Yeah, Yeah. Exactly. So, so, so you, you so for rendering, too, yeah. exactly. Awesome. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. I don't even want to tell you how I did that manually, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. So you can apply materials. Fantastic. Yep, yep. Yes, you can. Well, All that's right. to the topo, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The buildings, yeah. The, buildings yeah. the buildings are different, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The but topo maybe is really... with that spring nodes. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, mean... with the spring for sure. The spring nodes will let you uh, do much, much, much more things because the geometry will be like a legit family with a legit geometry. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, I think we pretty much covered everything yeah. that it does and that it should That's do fantastic. also. Thank you for, for the questions and all. It's really great to hear. And uh, it gives, gives me some motivations to, to get back to work on this project. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, we'd love it. We'd love it. How, Lots how of can, thank yous uh, coming in. Yeah. yeah. How, can, how can folks reach you, Mustafa? Um, okay. Uh, well, right here. Uh, this is my email. This is my Twitter handle. Um, feel free to reach out. Always, always great to uh, awesome. hear people's feedback. So, <laughs> and I'll, po I'll post any of the links to the YouTube channel as well as the blog tomorrow too. And I'm okay. sure Paul, I'm sure Paul will email his, his uh, group and let them know of any links and how they can reach out to you. But yeah, fantastic. absolutely. And, and uh, we've got a recording. I'm going to post it on our, the group site. So, um, so yeah, fantastic. All right. Well, we're super excited. We'd love to have you back at some point to uh, to cover your other projects. Uh, we could do data shapes. We could do. Um, uh, I already forgot the name of the other one. The the one you were just talking about. Uh, orchestra. 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 That's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and whatever else you might be working on in the future, there. Just let us know. We're always looking for uh, new new uh, topics. So excellent. Uh, well, love to definitely. have you back. We'll yeah. do. Thank you so much for the invite. I really, really appreciate it. And um, thank you for uh, for those of you that don't know, Mustafa's logging in here from uh, Paris, and it's like midnight for him right now. So uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, what is it? It's 12, what is it? Twelve fifteen now over there? Or is, yeah, one fifteen. Twelve fifteen. Yeah, it's one fifteen. Yeah, one fifteen. Oh late. man. One fifteen. Oh, go to bed. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah. That's when. All the, right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, for awesome. Oh, it's my staying pleasure, up guys. late for us. Awesome. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, All thank right. you to everybody. And, and uh, on YouTube, thank Thanks. you guys for joining me today and, and for Paul and, and Mustafa for coming on. This is always fun. Um, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm at the Revit Kid on Twitter. Paul Albin, I'm sure you guys can find him on Twitter as well. And Mustafa, I will I will post the links to uh, to his Twitter as well as his website uh, uh, for datashapes.io. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, everyone uh, on Teams and Paul for, for setting this up. It's always cool to have some fresh content, and I love these crossovers. So I, I appreciate yep. it. And uh, I'll see everyone on YouTube next week, and I'll, I'll talk to everyone else later. You had somebody there from London, by the way. So there we go. You're All not right. the only one up late. <laughs> so. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Good Thanks, night, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>